I love working and living around the ocean. The sound of the surf, looking out into the ocean, I can't imagine being anywhere else. I am Dr. Donna Shaver, and I lead the Kempsterly Sea Turtle Recovery Project here at Padre Island National Seashore. Kemp's Ridley is an endangered species that was almost obliterated within just a blink of an eye, and it became endangered because of human activities. And it's going to take human activities to help conserve that animal and to keep it on this planet for the future. There's still a long way to go to recover the population of the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. There was a film that was made in 1947 that showed an estimated 40,000 Kemp's Ridley's nesting at Rancho Nuevo on just one day. By the time that biologists went to the nesting beach to try to investigate, the number of Kemp's Ridley's nesting had already plummeted due to the loss of eggs, due to intentional taking of the eggs from the nesting beach, as well as loss of the juveniles and adults due to fisheries operations. The Kemp's Ridley population continued to decline to a low of only 702 nests worldwide for 1985. A project was started as a safeguard against extinction so that if a political or environmental catastrophe occurred at Rancho Nuevo, there'd be a safe area in the U.S. where Kemp's Ridley's could nest and be protected. From 1978 to 1988, 22,507 Kemp's Ridley sea turtle eggs were brought to Padre Island National Seashore for incubation in an attempt to establish a secondary nesting colony because Kemp's Ridley is a native nester to South Texas. What we tried to do was to imprint the turtles to Padre Island National Seashore. The hatchlings were released on the beach, allowed to crawl into the surf where they were recaptured using aquarium dip nets. Then the hatchlings were sent to the National Marine Fishery Service Laboratory in Galveston, Texas, where they were raised for approximately nine to 11 months. And that allowed the turtles to grow to a size large enough so that they could be tagged for future recognition and also to be able to avoid most predators when they were released. And that's a big turtle. It's about three feet long. And it took a full 10 years before we found our first confirmed returnee from that project. And it was an extremely happy day. Look at her. We knew that these turtles were from the project because they had on them living tags. A living tag is like a skin graft where there was a piece of the bottom shell taken out, a piece of the top shell, and that small plug from the bottom shell was glued into the surrounding shell surface on the top providing a permanent light identification marker on the darker background of the top shell. Okay, and there's the egg cavity with the eggs. Oh. She said there's about 100. This is very significant for us in that we've got the first uh, documented evidence of a sea turtle of any species that's been experimentally imprinted to a particular area to return to that area to nest. I love this job. We're looking for sea turtle tracks primarily. We're looking for those nesting turtles. We go for their eggs and we bring them into the hatching facility. We got six nests my first year and now to get a day when we get 19 in one day is just, it's so exciting. I can't tell you how much it means. It's nice to know that we'll be able to pass through this life and leave the earth a little bit better place than it was when we got here. This is the track left in the sand by the nesting female. This is what we're looking for when we're patrolling. As you can see, it's about a foot and a half to two feet wide, and there's scuff marks from the flippers and little divots in the sand that are made from the nails on the flippers as the turtle crawls up the beach or back down into the water.
Nesting camps release sea turtles are only on the beach for about 45 minutes. She lays the eggs. They come out in one or two or three at a time. They provide no maternal care for their eggs and don't return to the nest site. When the turtle is done, she will cover that nest cavity and she returns to the sea. It's very important that you watch carefully for nesting camps Ridley turtles. They are very slow and they can't move to avoid an approaching vehicle. This is a species that's been around for four million years. I feel like we've got an obligation to try to bring this species back so that it can be enjoyed by future generations. We work so hard to find Kempsterly nests on the Texas coast. Sometimes, despite hours of digging and of probing, we're unable to find the nest and protect those eggs. So when possible, we call in the expert sniffer, my Karen Terrier Ridley, who we've trained to aid with nest detection. Find the nest, Ridley. When we bring Ridley to a site, he aggressively sniffs on the beach, trying to find where that nest is located, and he really enjoys doing this. Find that nest, Ridley. Where's that nest? And the little dog, we could have spent five hours probing and digging, bring him in, and within a matter of just minutes, he locates the nest. Where's the nest? Oh, good boy, Ridley. You found it. You found it. Oh, good boy. The eggs are collected from all of the nests that we find on the Texas coast and brought in for protected incubation. The incubation temperature determines whether the turtles will be male or female. Warmer temperatures produce females, cooler temperatures males. We try to hatch mostly females so that they'll have a better chance of reproduction in the wild. During the day of the release, the turtles are immediately brought down to the beach and they're placed on the beach and allowed to enter the surf and go free. These animals are, are pretty primitive animals and basically are working on instinct right now. Um, smelling the salt air, hearing the waves probably, and just making a mad dash towards the water to try to get in there as quickly as they can. They're free and they're going to be on this uh, journey that's going to last their whole lifetime. After many years of hard work by many people, both in Mexico and the United States, the Kemp's Ridley population is increasing. For the future, we're going to have to continue our very hard work. This is an endangered species success story in the making.